All right, all right, all right. Say it with your chest. <laughs> Three bottles today, damn. Redwood Empire Whiskey, California's largest whiskey producer, last month announced the release of its limited edition Cast Strength collection. The collection includes versions of Cast Strength Pipe Dream Bourbon Whiskey, Cast Strength Emerald Giant Rye Whiskey, and Cast Strength Lost Monarch. Now, that Lost Monarch is what I can't wait to try. Cracking them fresh right here, right now, it's the Mash and Drum. What's up, folks? I'm Jason C. from The Master and Drum, and welcome back to the show. Like, subscribe, do all the things you need to do to help grow the channel. I really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like button as well. All three Redwood Empire Cash Strength releases are bottled at proofs ranging from 116.4 to 117.2. Now, the proofs are lower than many other Cash Strength whiskeys because of the time spent aging in the temperate climate in California's fog belt. All of them are available in limited quantities for a retail price of $70 each, okay? Time to pour these beauties and see which one is my favorite. In the meantime, let's hear about today's sponsor and a great gift idea for the holidays, it's Shaker and Spoon. Just in time for the holidays, guys, for the craft cocktail lover in your life, look no further than Shaker and Spoon, the must-have cocktail subscription service that teaches you to make high-end bar quality cocktails from recipes designed by award-winning mixologists. Each one of these box gets built around one singular spirit. Could be bourbon, could be rum, could be cocktail, could be something else. Each box includes all the ingredients other than the alcohol for about 12 cocktails. Everything you need, syrups, bitters, garnishes, specialty syrups, all made in-house by Shaker and Spoon. Now, whether it's you or someone you gift this to, Shaker and Spoon gives you these recipe cards in each box that guide you through crafting each cocktail step-by-step -step in great detail. The glassware you need, and detailed directions are all provided. Anyone can make and enjoy these high-end cocktails. Let's make one called, Is It Summer Yet? So I already have two ounces of my bourbon in the shaker. Let's add some strawberry rhubarb syrup to it. Not just shake it until there's an icy film around the shaker. Let's go. Got that icy film. All right, strain it into my Collins glass. Gotta get fancy like a bartender. Top it off with this honey pear soda. It sounds kind of delicious. Then to finish it off, one to two spritzes of white sage hydrosol. One, two. All right, let's give it a go. Ooh, I can smell the sage. Honey, pear, strawberry. <laughs> that's that's pretty summery and pretty damn delicious. Really easy to make too. All right, I know you guys want one of these now, so to get it, click the link below in the description and use the code Mash and Drum at checkout for $20 off your first box. That's right, 20 bucks off your first box. This will make an absolute great gift for the holiday season. And thanks to Shaker and Spoon for sponsoring the Mash and Drum. Cheers, everybody. All right, first, we're gonna start with the Cast Strength Pipe Dream Bourbon. Mash bill is 74 corn, 20% rye, 4.5% malted barley, and 1.5% wheat. So it's a four grain, minimum of four years with the components up to 12 years old. Proof 116.8 proof. Let's dive in right away. Here we go on the nose. There is a little bit of a youthful corn note in here. I mean, it says up to 12 years old. Not sure how much is in there, but by the way, Pipe Dream gets its name from the 14th tallest tree in the world. Pretty cool. There's a nuttiness to this. There's a nice, deep, rich brown sugar note to this. And just very heavy vanilla extract. It's very sweet on the nose. Let's give it a try. Here we go. Mm, that's nice. It's very nice, actually. It's very fruit forward. I get a lot of caramel apple. There Again, there's, there's a hint of uh, a, a youthful quality to it. Not in a bad way. It's just there ever so slightly, but it is very fruit forward. I mean, I'm getting like grilled peaches in this. I'm getting apple, pear, very stone fruity, you know, some stone fruity vibes to it. Yeah, second sip, you get a little bit more of the, again, the stone fruit. It's like peaches and honey and pear and apple all just kind of coming together here. It's good if you like a stone fruit forward expression, yeah, this will do the trick. It's interesting. The finish kind of gets into a darker, like sweet tobacco type note that I'm not getting on the front or the middle of the palette. That's kind of a nice transition. Finish isn't super long, but it does give you a nice spice component right in the back end. All right. Uh, so far, so good. Let's try with the rye one I'm really excited to try as well. 
All right, next up we have the calf strength Emerald Giant Rye. This one is a mash bill of 94% rye, 5% malted barley, and 1% wheat. So in a way, it's kind of a weeded rye whiskey, which is kind of cool. Minimum of four years with components up to six years old. The proof on this is 116.4 proof. And this one gets its name from the fastest growing redwood in the world. So let's try the Emerald Giant Rye. Here we go. Yeah, this is all rye, man. This is all rye, baby. A lot of citrus, but like a musty citrus. There's something musty about it. Very sweet, it's earthy. It's very floral as well. I'm almost getting like, like perfume aspects in this. I mean, nothing that I wouldn't expect. I mean, it's very orangey, it's cinnamon, it's floral. The rye grain is there, but man, it is coming off to me very perfumey, which is a little bit of a, of a different vibe for me for, uh, for a rye whiskey. So let's try it. That weird like perfuminess is actually sticking with me on the palate here. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. I love the flavors from the back to the, from the middle of the palate to the back of the palate. The front is, that's weird. Or I could have been just a fresh crack, but it's kind of dissipating a little bit. This is all orange cream, spice, cinnamon. There is a slight like coffee note to it as well. Maybe that's what I'm getting. That perfumey note I was getting, that mustiness is starting to go away. Maybe that was a fresh pour thing. But this is really developing nicely on the palate. Really good waves of cinnamon to uh, to that orange cream, to that almost rye minty spearmintiness that it that it has. It kind of lingers for a little bit. The Emerald Giant Rye Whiskey, the normal variant, is a very easy sipping rye whiskey, and. Um, and while I liked it, I, I did want it a, a bump in proof, but this is actually drinking exactly how I thought it would. Just those easy sipping flavors, just amped up, uh, but it's all front and mid palate. The finish still finishes very easy, and the black pepper, like right on the back end, you know, it does stick around, but it still provides like a nice, easy drinking experience. This is a really nice rye. Yeah, I don't know if it's that 1% wheat, but it's really just softening the whole experience. I feel like if you're a, a rye whiskey drinker that likes sharp, spicy rye, this isn't gonna be in your wheelhouse. All right, next up, the one I've been waiting for, Cast Strength Lost Monarch, let's go. I hope it's my favorite. Been building this one up in my head for a little while. All right, so the details on the Cast Strength Lost Monarch. Mash bill, 55% of the Emerald Giant mash bill and 45% of the Pipe Dream Mash Bill. Aged a minimum of three years with components up to 14 years old. Proof of this is 117.2. Gets its name from the world's largest coastal redwood. Yeah, this is this is what I want. It's, it's like a Burai blend. You know when you build something like, when I first had this, the, the regular version, the regular bottling, I want it to be a higher proof so badly and here it is. I'm just, let's see how it goes, guys. Here we go. Oh, I'm still getting a little bit of a youthful characteristic, and I'm not sure if that's just the, the bourbon mash bill adding to that youthful character, because that's what we got on the pipe dream. But, so as this is opened up, this is actually kind of a nice mix. I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of the pear, I think, from the bourbon, but I'm also getting a lot of that orange citrus spice from the rye. This one also has what I noticed, which I, which I wasn't getting in the other two, more ethanol is coming through here, more like of an alcohol scent. But I think the mix of them together has made this more baking spice forward. So cinnamon, cinnamon apple, pear, maybe a little hint of nutmeg there. Let's try it. Here we go. Hmm. I don't know if I like this one blended as it is. Not sure if I'm liking this one. That's kind of a disappointment. Just coming off the other two, this one is, I feel like the blend is fighting one another. I don't feel like it's meshed very well, at least quite yet. All right, that sip was a little bit better. Okay, so yeah, just as I, just as I kind of 
was saying on the nose. All the pear comes up front. I think some of that apple as well. I'm not really getting the apricot I was getting before on the, on the palate that I was getting on the bourbon, but the rye spice really kind of takes over. The orange is there, the spice, the black pepper, maybe a little hint of that coffee bean I was picking up on the rye as well. This one is actually drinking the softest, which, you know, could be just a, you know, a byproduct of, of the blend together and, and, and the whiskey's meshing, but man, I don't know which one I like more. My favorite might be the rye this time. I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed in this one. I don't think it's as good as I wanted it to be. Maybe I built it up in my head too much. <laughs> But yeah, this one is falling a little bit flat. I'm not sure if it's just the blend not working or maybe I need this to open up a little bit more, but off the bat, I just feel like the blend is, is not cohesive enough. The flavors that I was getting, those strong flavors I was getting in the bourbon and then the rye separately are not translating to the blend in any sort of way for me. All right, I'm gonna taste them all three of them quick back to back and see how they compare. All right guys, I'm gonna go bourbon first. I like the bourbon a lot on the nose. It's so sweet, it's inviting. Yeah, that is a very beautiful fruit forward, just, just a really nice bourbon. It's balanced, it's got some really, you know, good flavors. I'm digging that one. Uh, let's go to the rye. Yeah, the rye has impact, it has spice, it's flavorful, again. That little hint of, a, uh, of coffee bean is what is making me go back to that rye. And now we go to the Lost Monarch. You know, the Lost Monarch might be getting better, but I think the combination of the two has softened this one up. So I think the bourbon and the rye are more impactful on its own, but in the blend together on the Lost Monarch, it softens it out, the, the whole experience. So, all right, let's talk about all three real quick. All right, so let's break this down a little bit. Now that I've tried all three of them, when it comes to the price, 70 bucks for all three of these, at least at retail for all three Redwood Empire limited editions, if you're interested in buying them. The, the bourbon, I will say if you like a, a certain fruit forward flavor profile in your bourbons, you're gonna love the bourbon, but it's actually not my favorite. The Lost Monarch to me, which is the one I built up the most in my head, the blending of the two made this really soft. And I just don't see that as a $70 bottle. Is it a nice blend? I'm hoping it gets better. But my favorite of the three is the rye, which is funny because I think it's the least, it's my least favorite of the regular variants. But in this cast strength version, this rye freaking smacks. It's delicious, it's orangey, it's sweet, it's spicy. That little hint of a coffee bean in there. Absolutely in love with it. So if you're looking at all three of these and you're, you know, you're on a limited budget, the rye I think is the one to go with if you like rye. I don't know, the other two are okay, but for 70 bucks, I am all about this uh, Redwood Empire cast strength rye. This Emerald Giant is absolutely delicious. That is my favorite from the new Redwood Empires. All right, guys, I well, hope you enjoyed this review for the new Redwood Empire cast strength limited editions. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram and Twitter. Let me know down in the comments if you've tried all three. What was your favorite? And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. I'm going to drink this shit out of this Emerald Giant rye. It's delicious. Cheers, guys.